Welcome to today's video, you guys. I have completed all of my makeup declutters for the year of 2023. And if you saw any of those videos, you guys know I was going through my product categories and picking out items that I just wasn't sure that I wanted to keep. Some stuff I really haven't tested in a while. I mean, especially when you have a larger collection, a lot of things get ignored when you're testing new makeup. I don't know if those things are mutually exclusive. That's just how my words came out. Anyway, there were a lot of things that I was picking out, put into a chopping block so that I can retest these items to decide whether or not they're gonna stay in my collection or gonna go because I haven't tested some of these in a minute, especially the powder product. I did not count ahead of time, you guys, on how many products are here, but it was quite a bit. I had two baskets that are sitting right here in front of me that I have filled, but I will go ahead and pop up the number on the screen of the total items that are in the chopping block. I don't know yet if I'm going to like film different videos testing these products with like wear tests or not, or whether or not I'm just gonna test them privately and then start doing like updates, like chopping block, you know, primers and concealers, something like that. However, in today's video, I wanna go over every single one of the items that I put in the chopping block, tell you guys why I put it in there, and then kind of go from there. So I think we will start off with primers. I picked out two primers. So the first one is the NYX The Marshmallow Primer. I bought this because of the hype. Everybody said that it smelled like marshmallows. I have had this in my collection a while. It does only have probably a 12 month shelf life on it. It's kind of a whipped consistency. It does have a sweet smell. I just can't remember if it does anything. I don't know if it really like locks my makeup down or if it's just kind of an additional step that just seems to, you know, really do nothing for me. It still smells fine. I remember that it was very smooth on the skin and it kind of like filled in my pores. But aside from that, I just don't know if it had any effectiveness. I actually ended up decluttering what I consider quite a few primers and only held on to really the just top, top ones. So I wanna know if this does anything like I remember it to, or even if it's just kind of like smooth on the skin, you know, it just kind of like smooths out my face and the foundation over it. Cause I have one of those products, which is like the Tula, I'll throw it up here. And that one I put in a chopping block and realized I absolutely loved it. It was one of those things that I feel like it needed a retest and then ended up becoming one of my favorites. So interested to see if this does. The second one is from Hourglass. It's the number 28 Primer Serum. So this is just a clear serum, but it's very sticky. I equate it to like what aloe vera feels like on the skin. It even kind of smells like that. So see how it's just clear, but it's this very, very sticky formula. Kind of like the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip, if you will. Yeah, the scent is very, very strong. Let's take a quick peek at like what this primer is really supposed to do. Wow, so the full size of this retails for $65. This is just the mini, I forgot to mention that. And I can't remember how much I paid for this, but I'm assuming it was like uh, 20 something dollars. It's a richly concentrated, intensely hydrating, dual purpose oil blend serum that treats your skin as it prepares for makeup. It's a silky, luxurious oil blend that glides on to strengthen the skin's natural moisture barrier, even out pores and shield against environmental aggressors. So it has 14 essential oils, 10 lipid-rich plant oils, and four vitamins. It's supposed to make your skin dewier and more luminous. See, I don't know if this is really something that I am like looking to do these days. It would be nice if it like gripped the makeup. I just don't know if this is really designed to do that. Like it's very, very sticky and it doesn't really dry down the greatest. I will definitely have to see like how the foundation sits on top of it now that I have pretty oily skin because this might be something that just clashes. So I will test that one. That was the only other one that I had in the primer category. I do not have any foundations. If you guys have watched my channel at all, you know that I'm going through foundation a day, testing all of my foundations that are in my collection. I will do a full declutter in that category as soon as I am done. I am on today, I think is like day 29, I'm pretty sure. I am testing one currently. So we don't have any foundations, but the next thing that I do have is the under eye corrector from Milani. This one, I don't remember really doing anything. It's a very thin formula. So in essence, it feels like it would be a good product to keep. The only one that I know of that works really well, that's still very lightweight and doesn't mess with my concealers is the one from Rimmel. I'll pop up a picture here. It was actually a subscriber that recommended it to me. It's the only color corrector besides the Becca one that I found that really does anything. 
using. I remember using this and it just didn't do enough for me. It just seemed to blend into my skin and then not color correct really the darkness under my eyes. So this one I'm gonna have to retest. I mean, if it doesn't work, I mean really one time will kind of tell me. So let's move on into concealers. Oh my goodness, I feel like concealers was the largest category. I did the concealer declutter first. So I remember it the least. Wow, there are so many concealers here, you guys. There's three, six, nine. There are 10 concealers here. I was trying to go pretty brutal on the concealers as well because I have a tendency to keep a lot of concealers if they're just okay and not like get rid of them if they don't end up becoming some of my favorites. And a ton of concealers dropped last year. So I feel like every one of these was a drop from 2023. So let's go over the first one. The first one is the All Hours Precise Angles Concealer from YSL. I have made in the shade LC1. It is the kind that has like a pretty precise tip on it. It's supposed to help you like get into the, you know, inner corners. And I remember it being okay, but leaning a little bit yellow on me, um, especially for something that is light cool one, I want it to not be warm. And I feel like, yeah, no, maybe not yellow. It just leaned pretty warm. See kind of how orange it looks. I remember this being a really lightweight formula. I kind of remember it just being like, okay, just an okay concealer. And honestly, I feel like I'm prioritizing concealers a little bit more lately in how they wear. I don't want them to be okay. I want them to be amazing. You guys tell me if that's like something that you've prioritized. I feel like as I get older, that's definitely something that I'm looking for. So yeah, I mean, I want it to be more than okay. And if the shade uh, doesn't work for me, it's probably something I wouldn't repurchase if it didn't end up being like a really good formula standout and all that. The second one is the Catrice True Skin High Cover Concealer. I remember liking the concealer but not loving the foundation, I think is how I remember it. This is so lightweight. This one is a little bit of a deeper shade. Um, my stuff's gonna be all over the place. This is 010 Cool Cashmere, so this really is cool toned, unlike the one from YSL. This feels very, very lightweight on the skin, and it seems to have pretty decent coverage, but not heavy. Yeah, I think I remember really loving this, but not loving the foundation. But I'm pretty sure I tested both of these when I had dry skin, and now that I have much more combo oily skin, I'm going to retest the foundation. I have not done that yet, but I need to retest this. It says hydrating. I just don't remember how it looked on my under eyes. So we're gonna give that one another go. The next one I have is the Makeup Forever HD Skin. This one is in the shade 1.3N. Don't remember much about this. Again, I kind of feel like it was just okay. I, I remember it just being like, oh, right? This one is a little bit of a thicker consistency. I wanna say this one had a little bit more full. Look at the range of these shades, it's wild. That's me buying stuff online, basically is what it is. And sometimes I shop fast, so my shades are all over the place. Unless the product is really light on my skin, I feel like you guys, don't say anything, you don't tend to notice. I don't anyway. But this feels like a little bit of a thicker consistency. It feels like a higher coverage. I just remember it kind of being okay. I, I don't remember because I didn't do like full on wear tests that I was paying attention to how this was wearing. Even though it went into a speed reviews, after that I don't remember touching it at all. Then the next one is the Makeup by Mario Surreal Skin Concealer, I think is the name of this. Yeah, Surreal Skin Awakening Concealer. This is in the shade 160. This kind of looks like the foundation. It's been sitting in this basket for probably like two weeks and it kind of looks like it's separating a little bit. This is one of the newer concealers to me. This one also felt lightweight, but it was on the warm side. I don't remember much else about it. Again, I feel like this was just okay. And then the Makeup Revolution IRL Filter Finish. I remember actually really liking this one, the Soft Matte Concealer in C2. Hmm, that one has a really flat pointed tip. Now that I'm looking at these tips again, I just did a video testing the new L'Oreal concealer and I just realized that these have very similar doe foot applicators. Hmm, 
This one is thicker in consistency, like more so than a lot of the other ones, but lighter weight than the HD concealer from Makeup Forever. I really like this shade though. This shade kind of looks like it would mesh well with a foundation that I was wearing. I kind of like that it's pretty true medium coverage. This one has a really strong scent though. It smells like alcohol. I don't know that this has less than a 12 month shelf life. Pretty sure I have not had this for 12 months yet. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. But 16 hour wear, long wear, breathable, anti-creasing, waterproof. I would love this to work. It feels really good on the skin, so. The next one that I'm gonna have to retest is the concealer from Gucci. This one is in a yellow shade though, 14N Fair. This came out very yellow for me, and yeah, ooh, this is like the yellowest. But again, I just kind of remember this being okay. This is a very, very lightweight concealer. It basically looks kind of sheer on the swatch up close. And yeah, I don't know if that's what I'm looking for. And also, this is again one of those things where because the shade is so off for me, my fault or not regardless, it's something that I need to decide. If I love it, then I need to like go and shade match myself in store or something like that because this is just very, very warm very yellow so anyway don't remember a lot about it looks more like you know sheer to light coverage and then i have one from it cosmetics it's the bye bye dark spots concealer plus serum this one is supposed to be medium buildable coverage with a natural finish comes with one of those weird brush tips it's awful though it's so hard in light neutral 22. i kept this one because i feel like it was the best IT Cosmetics concealer, this does not stand, um, that I've ever tried. I've tried the Bye Bye Dark Circles one. One of the Bye Bye ones, I can't remember. It was kind of in the squeezy tube. That one was so thick on my under eyes. It looked absolutely terrible. It was so full coverage and drying. So I decluttered it a long time ago. But then I tried this one when it released last year and it was such a better formula for me. So much more lightweight. I feel like it's just medium coverage and I feel like again it was kind of an okay concealer it wasn't my favorite but I do remember saying that the reason that I was gonna hold on to this is because it's the first it cosmetics concealer to have worked for me but I'm really trying to narrow it down I don't want to be overwhelmed with products the way that I think of makeup is if I keep it and it's not just like something that I'm gonna reference in a future video and I even try and keep that collection pretty small in the closet and I want to declutter it every single year then I want to use every product that I keep in my permanent collection I want to get use out of every single one of those products and so I don't want to just keep it in the drawer and feel like oh, I'm so inundated with choices, I'm gonna keep grabbing like the same one. I wanna grab it because I absolutely love it. The next one is the Tower 28 concealer. I think this was the serum concealer, yeah. I have mine in the shade EP. This was another one where I feel like it was decent, but I feel like it settled into my fine lines. I wanna see if this can be applied more sparingly, and this is totally a wrong shade. This is more like medium to full coverage, maybe more medium coverage. There's so much product in here. This could be a concealer that would last you a long time. I feel like if you really liked it, I wanna say this says six months on it. It's the writing is so small. I like, woo, like adjusting my eyes is crazy. So what I'd like to do is just like maybe try and find an application that works. Maybe it's just kind of like one dot and then I end up really loving it and that way it doesn't settle in. But I do remember this settling into my fine lines, I think especially on my right eye. So anyway, I don't want it to settle. It's not its fault, you know, necessarily. <laughs> but if it doesn't work for me, this is something that I would just keep as reference um, and not keep in my permanent collection. The next one that I have is the Valentino Concealer. It's the Very Valentino Concealer, concealer in LN2. This is the full size. It honestly looks like I've used a lot of the product, but I probably have only used this like five or six times. Um, I don't remember a ton other than this looked really warm on me. And then light N is light neutral too. I just don't think this was neutral. This one is a tackier consistency. It felt tackier going on. I wanna say it's light coverage, pretty light coverage. It probably could be buildable. I don't remember a ton about this. Yeah, I don't, I don't. It just doesn't stand out to me in, in memory. And then the final concealer is the one from House Labs. This one is in 04 Fair Neutral. You know, a lot of people love 
House Labs complexion products, but for me, they're very thick. They just feel very thick on the skin. They don't seem to work for me. I kind of felt that way about this concealer. Yeah, this is the stickiest of the bunch. You guys, I, I wish I could describe this better, just how sticky, like kind of slimy it feels on my skin. Foundation feels the same way. I did not mind the coverage level and I actually think this performed really well. I just felt like it felt heavy on, on the under eyes. Kind of how I feel about the foundation, just feels heavy on the skin. So we're gonna test it out with real clarity here. I am pulling all of my powders forth next. I also tried to be pretty cutthroat with the powders as well. I'm really into powders, but I really want a mattifying, long lasting like lockdown powder. And so if it's not, I really don't wanna mess around with it. I don't really worry about a powder being too heavy on me anymore, but there are some that I haven't reached for uh, in a while. So the first one I actually did put in you know, viral products that just don't work for me. It's the Huda Beauty Baby Bake Loose Baking and Setting Powder. This is just the mini, and this one is in Pound Cake. I talked about this just not doing a whole lot for me. A lot of people swear by this. I get it, it's fine. You know, I don't need everything that works for everybody to work for me. This is pretty full. I just, I haven't found a ton of success in this. I do not feel as though this did enough for my skin when it was dry, I felt like it was a little heavy. And then it, when my skin was oily, I just, I didn't find that it locked down my foundation very well. So I'm gonna have to test this again. Because this is so popular, I would just move this to reference, but I wouldn't personally reach for it. Then the next one that I have is the Say Powder. This is the Air Set Radiant Loose Setting Powder in Translucent. I vaguely remember using this powder. I do not remember it being radiant. I don't remember how it looked. I feel like the only thing I remember about this is that maybe it was a little bit heavy, but again, I want to say, and I keep saying, that there's a lot of stuff that I got, you know, before my hormones changed my skin to just a lot more oily. 2022 was pretty wild for me in terms of complexion changes. So I want to see if this is too heavy. I want to see if I noticed the radiance. I have not reached for it in so long, I have no idea. And then this one I have loved and I feel like is about half gone. And so if this did end up working for me, I would love to put this in a project pan because it's one of my older loose powders in my collection. And the loose powder that I just had in my project pan, I just finished it off yesterday. So I have room for another one. This is the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Finishing Powder in Fair Light. It is a finishing powder. I feel like I hear a lot of people talk about this more as a setting powder, but you know, I don't know if it's, kind of products that I'm looking for right now because I have other finishing powders and honestly I would prefer a finishing powder in a pressed form and then a loose powder for like setting. I don't, I don't know why. You guys tell me if you're like that, but that's just kind of how I feel about it. Even though it's a finishing powder, it's still supposed to help control shine and smooth skin texture. I just don't remember it like locking my foundation down. So even though it's nice, I feel like it's great for someone with dry skin. Will it work for me being oily in the T-zone? That's really the question. And then the infamous Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Setting Powder. I've had this one in my collection for a while as well. I remember getting this because of the hype, but I got it when I had dry skin and I just don't even know if I've reached for it since I've had oily skin. I feel like I've been reaching for more recent launches, like the one from one size. I even use an e.l.f. one that I absolutely love. I just haven't reached for this one, so interested to see how that one works on me now. I just have one setting spray here, so we'll go over this one. This was the Sephora Makeup Setting Spray. This is supposed to be transfer proof, sweat and humidity resistant, 16 hour wear. I literally cannot remember if this did any additional thing for me. And I pared down my setting sprays to like four max because I just don't use them that often. I kept like one makeup mist and I like to use that occasionally if I feel like you know, I went in too heavy with a powder, I just wanna refresh. Sometimes I like to spray my sponges with them and then tap out the foundation and apply it that way. But I don't know if this is gonna lock down my foundation the way that I like my setting sprays too. So I've gotta retest this one. Otherwise, uh, I don't know, I probably just declutter it since I'm just not reaching for setting sprays all that often. We might as well do bronzers next. Holy smokes, there's so many bronzers here. I was really cutthroat apparently or indecisive, one of the two. So what should we start with? Let's start with powder products first. 
So the first one that I have is from Glowish. It's the Soft Radiance Bronzing Powder in 01 Light. I think this is fairly good. Like I remember this being like one of those really neutrally bronzers. Well, maybe it has a little bit of warmth. Um, on the harder pressed side, so not intensely pigmented, more of a buildable formula, but you know, not one of my favorites that I really remember that logs in my mind is something that just looked super beautiful on the skin. It is very, very soft radiance. It's nearly matte. So gonna have to test this one again, don't know. And then I have the Butter Donut Bronzer from Physicians Formula. I have held onto this. It came from like the Donut Shop collection and there were several bronzers that launched and I feel like this is the only one that I held onto. This was the most neutral of all the shades. I love the scent. I just find that some Physicians Formula products are a little bit too orange on my fair skin and they don't really come in shades, you know? This was like Sprinkles was the name of this in the butter donut collection that came out. I want to say like two years ago at this point. So it's such a beautiful formula. I just don't know if I'm reaching for shades this warm. I'm just going to have to see how it looks on the skin because I'm grabbing for things so much more neutral and light. I am testing one today that's on the warm side. So I'm not even sure I'm going to hold on to that one. This one is a little bit older in my collection. It's the Milani Bronzer Silky Matte Bronzing Powder in Sunlight from Milani. This one has always been like a really hard pressed formula. Again, pretty buildable, pretty neutral shade, pretty unoffensive. But part of its buildability was just that it was kind of on the harder pressed side. You know, this one seems like the most neutral of all the ones I just swatched. I wonder if this is like something that I would like more now because I just kind of felt like this was maybe a little bit too light previously, but now I feel like I'm just, I'm, I'm into something like this now. So yeah, gonna have to test this one again. This one might end up becoming like a new favorite. This one from Kaleidos is one of their mono blushes. And I got rid of the other one that I purchased in Angel Wing, but this one is in Hot Shot. It's not a blush shade for me. It's a, it's a bronzer shade. So I put it in my bronzer collection because I really liked the neutrality of this. And I actually really loved, hmm, now that I'm looking at this, it almost has like this reddish undertone because it's like a blush. And that is kind of what I'm reaching for right now. This swatch, I think it just turned me around because it's such a creamy light formula, not overly pigmented. It's honestly, it feels really soft and luxurious. And now that I swatched it, this definitely looks like one that's gonna make it into like one of my favorites, you know? Sometimes that happens. You put stuff back in the topping block and then you rediscover it like it's new kind of. There's just one more powder one. So this one is from Jouer. I'm pretty sure this launched in 2023. It's the Menage a Trois Butter Bronzer Blush and Highlighter. So it's one of those tribrid products. It's in Cessoir. It's really deep though on me. I think it's beautiful. I think it was trying to go for like the bare minerals like bronzer, but like add highlighter to it as well. I just can't see myself using this as a bronzer or I don't know if I want to use this as a blush because it's like so orange. This is just one of those products I need to figure out like do I really love this? Can I make this work for me? Could I even use this on the eyes? Like I'm not sure how I want to use this yet just because the shade is just kind of you know, one of those like in-betweens. I mean, it's nice if you had a deeper complexion as a highlighter. I just maybe would like this better as a blush. I just don't like it as a bronzer. I don't think I've ever tried it as a blush. So I'm gonna test this out as a blush and see if I like it. All right, let's move into some sticks and wands. Um, the first one that I have is a contour. It's the Liquid Contour from Milani in 01 Honey. I think the reason that I put this in a chopping block is because I feel like this is more of a bronzer shade for me. I feel like I'm not bronzing with like liquid sticks. Like it's okay, but I had so many, I needed to pare it down. So I need to see whether or not, you know, this is like a favorite formula as a bronzer, not a contour. Similarly, I have the one from e.l.f. This looks terrible in the tube. It does not look healthy. So I don't know how long these are supposed to last. I mean, they say 12 months, but all my products that I picked up from e.l.f. that are like this don't look so good in the tube. I think this one is so much better. Yeah, 
This is real contour shade. See how much this is a bronzer from Milani? I just don't know if I love this. Like there are other formats that I would like to use. So I don't know if I'm gonna like love holding onto this one over some of my others, but this is a true contour shade. I, I just need to retest this to see if this is gonna become a love of mine because I think I only held on to like two contours, liquid contours like this, so. And I, I feel like that's all I kind of need in my collection. And I think that's kind of what it comes down to is I already have some, so do I need that one? Does that one beat out other ones? Then the Man Eater Stick from Tarte. This is in the shade Dusk. It's called the Silk Stick. This is a bronzer too. This one has a bit of warmth and I feel like that's why I was on the fence about it. I absolutely love this formula. It's kind of an orangey, really warm shade, almost like a bit of yellow to it. So is this really what I'm reaching for right now? I don't know. I told you guys I'm into much more neutral bronzers at the current moment. And the last like liquid one is the one from Glossy. It's the Solar Paint Luminous Bronzer Cream and Flare. I remember I actually quite liked this, but I've had this in my collection for a while. It's nice. It's thin. It's maybe a little bit warm. So I need to retest it. I just, again, I'm just really not into this much warmth right now. Not that that's not good and not that I won't reach for it in the spring and summertime. It's just, I'm just not loving it at the current moment. Or maybe I just haven't ever loved it and I'm just coming to find that like, I'm so much into a, like a rosy tone bronzer. All right, let's move into all my creams. So the first one that I have is the ColourPop Super Shock Bronzer in Matte matte finish i guess they're all matte finish in the shade sandy i've had this one a while i don't even remember is this a pretty mm, this is kind of orangey too so again yeah it's gonna be it's gonna come down to a shade thing i think oh i feel like there is so much here you guys it's just crazy that i was on the fence about all of this stuff the one from juvia's place i know exactly why this one is in buttercream it's because it has luminosity to it and dislike things with shimmer for the forehead but it was a really nice shade but this is not just like luminous it like has sparkles in it might be difficult to detect on camera but it definitely has some sparkles so I like that for the cheeks that's fine I just don't know if I like gold sparkles on my forehead I don't like the way that that looks so will it be something that I reach for just for the cheeks I don't know it's one of those products that I'm kind of throwing in to contrast others for example like do i put this on and i realize so orange no thank you and then i put this on and i'm like yeah this becomes one of my favorites because it's so much more neutral in comparison to a lot of the other ones that i'm testing this one is a little one from lower east side this is in the shade skyscraper i think i remember loving this because it's just a cream to powder formula that's like really easy to work with but I do feel like this has gotten on the drier side. And I also feel like I swatched it during my declutter and it ended up looking a little bit warm, no deep, a little bit too deep for me. And I think that's kind of why I wanted to test it again. It's such a beautiful formula. It's so easy to work with. Swatching it is fantastic. I remember applying it, it's really nice and easy, but is this too deep for me? So, and then this one I've had in my collection a while. This is the Tantor Contour and Bronzing Cream in Fair from Huda. I have not reached for this in like so long. So I remember absolutely loving it. The formula still feels amazing, but is it too deep? This is one of those hybrid products. It's supposed to have a little bit of warmth and then a little bit of neutrality. Man, look how similar it is to the skyscraper one. But will I wear this as a bronzer with my super fair skin slash contour? I don't know, we need to test this again. It's so similar to the other shade. It's like identical, honestly. So I don't know if I end up loving one, I guess I'll just end up loving both. The Huda Beauty Tantor is creamier though. This has a ton more emollients to it, whereas the one from Lower East Side is a much drier formula. So I don't know which one I prefer. I go back and forth, I think. And then this one from Tarte is the Breezy Cream Bronzer in Seychelles. I also really love this. It's a cream to powder formula. But again, I think it's probably too warm and maybe a little bit too deep. I'm pretty sure this is the lightest shade that they make. But I need to test this again to see, is it really the shade that I'm liking? See how warm that is? But is it like red? Again, I just need to apply this to the face and see how it looks. I think it's just too warm leaning, but we'll see. Speaking of warm leaning, 
the Soul Body Bronzer in Fair Face and Body Bronzing Balm. I've had this a while. Still smells delightful, still feels good, but it is extremely warm. It's a lighter warm, but it's basically like orange. Again, I don't know if I'm reaching for oranges like this. It's pretty, and I think a lot of people like this. I just don't know if I'm reaching for something that orange right now. And then the final one that I have is from Rose Ink. I feel like this one was a little bit too warm too. It's her cream bronzer in Parrot K. And if I remember correctly, she came out with additional shades. I could be wrong, but I feel like she came out with more neutral tones because a lot of the, her first launches were um, pretty warm leaning. And yeah, see, I feel like this one's just like too orange and like not a lot of anything else. <sighs> you know, her, her cream products tend to kind of dry out a little bit quickly too on me. They don't seem to stay like super creamy super long. I feel like it still feels good, but yeah, just the shade needs to be re-examined on the skin. Now let's move on into my blushes. I feel like there's quite a few blushes as well, so. All right, let's again, let's just start with all of the powder blushes. I don't have as many powder blushes as I do like cream and liquid here. The first one that I have is the Dior Rosy Glow, Backstage Rosy Glow in 02, 04 Coral. You know, I really liked the shade over the one in 01 Pink, but I don't know if I'm, again, reaching for shades like this or something this lightly pigmented. I also feel like this formula wasn't overly superior over some of my others. I mean, it's nice and buildable. This may be something that I hold on to. It's just that I feel like I have other formulas in my collection that I, I like a little bit more than this. I think once you kind of break through that first barrier, this becomes a little bit softer. But again, I need to test it. I don't know if this is really a shade that I'm reaching for right now either. I, I think I'm just kind of staying away from more peachy blushes. Whereas in 2023, I feel like all I did was buy peachy blushes. I feel like I'm kind of reevaluating. I don't want to just declutter them because there may be a time where I really enjoy like a peachy blush again or a season or whatever, but I just feel like I'm, I'm not grabbing for shades like this but we'll retest it. The next one that I have is from MAC. It's one of the mineral blushes in Sweet Enough. This is really nice. I just don't want it to sit around, you know? I want it to get like love if it's gonna be a loved product from me. And this just doesn't stand out, I feel like, in my collection of blushes that I have. There are other formulas that I like more than this. This is a little bit of a, a matter finish than maybe I'm reaching for at the current moment. So I, I'd rather pass it along if it's not gonna be something that I absolutely love. So I do need to retest that one. Same thing with the one from Charlotte Tilbury. I used to love this. This is even kind of a, a finish that I'm reaching for right now. It's the Cheek to Cheek in Pillow Talk. But the problem with this shade that I didn't initially notice is that in this one pillow talk shade, it tends to kind of cast a little bit gray, especially in a shimmery blush. That's kind of what I find. And I don't want it to be too gray on the cheeks. Maybe this is something that I end up coming to love because I'm really liking shimmery blushes. I just want to see, does this turn out too gray on me or was that all in my mind? So we'll retest that one too. Three more powder blushes. The first one is from Too Faced. This is one of the Cloud Crush Blurring Blushes in Velvet, in Velvet Crush. I really like this shade. It's a formula thing for me. It's kind of, um, it doesn't apply super evenly. I don't know if you guys can kind of see that. It, it's not super even. And I always feel like it kind of went on my skin a little bit patchy. I mean, I feel like it looks better when you start to rub it in. It's just not super even initially. So want to test this out. Again, I have shades like this. Honestly, one that's similar is the MAC one. So, you know, if it comes down to like, I have a similar shade in a powder formula that performs, I would just let this one go because it's just a little bit patchy. I don't, I don't know why. I don't get that very often. And the last two have to do with really intensity and pigmentation. I really like a pigmented blush, but this one from Catkin in C05 is pretty intense. Again, it comes down to like what the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk shade is. It's that luminous kind of mauve shade that can look a little bit gray on me. Yeah, there it is. It's beautiful swatched. I just can't remember this looking great on my skin. 
See how sometimes just depending upon like what way I turn it, it can look a little gray on my cheek. So I need to test that one. And then this one is from Unique Beauty, beautiful formula. It's just that the shade in Danakil is so intense. It's like so pigmented. It's kind of difficult to diffuse out. You can't go in with a light hand with this. I need to see whether or not, you know, this is gonna look good on me. It's cute and I've traveled with it. It's just, it's so intense, so, so intense. So need to try this one again. This one from Rowan, pretty nice. It's the blush, cream blush and natural rose. It's kind of a smell thing for me and also like a preference thing. I've dug into this one pretty hard. I've even traveled with it. It's a little bit of a harder formula, not as emollient as some of my cream blushes. It's a stickier formula too. So do I want to reach for a stickier formula or one that's a similar shade that's less sticky? I think. The smell wasn't that one. The smell one was this one, the one from Ritual Defeat. The Inner Glow Cream Pigment in Desire. This one has a strong kind of aromatherapy smell to it. It's a really pretty like purpley mauve shade, but it's stickier too. Same thing, just a little bit of a stickier finish. Not sure I'm loving stickier finishes, even though I'm, I'm into more luminous products. Then this one from Glossier. I haven't worn this in so long, you guys. This one is in Dusk. The cloud paint, I literally can't even remember. Does this have a dewy finish or is this a matte finish? Like it's literally been so long. Does this still perform well? Is this more sheer or more intense? Does it look flat on the cheeks? Like so many questions, I just can't remember. I feel like this is one of the first cream blushes that a lot of us had, not cream, but liquid. So I honestly can't even remember what it looks like. So I need to retest to see if I love it. This one from Euphoria, I really do like, it's like a glossy stain. It's the BYO Blush Oil in Turn Up the Sunshine. Let me swatch it here because it's going to stain on me. It's really nice product. It performs exactly as it should. It does everything that it's supposed to do. It's just a little bit sticky. And do I want to reach for this? Like it has a glossy finish about it. It's nicely pigmented. It's beautiful. But I just don't know if I'm into this kind of like overly sticky formula or would I rather reach for something else? Because I feel like it's really good. It's just will I reach for it, I think is, is the thing. This one from Ulta is the Too Cheeky for lips and cheeks. And this one is in Charmed. I decluttered the other two blushes that I had from Ulta, the Cream Compact and then the Liquid, but I held onto the stick. I think the stick is really pretty. Again, it just comes down to will I reach for this one like over the other ones. This one is kind of more of a powdery finish. I don't know that the answer is I would reach for this one over other ones. So I just want to fall in love with them. And if they turn out to be just okay, that's probably what's going to make me end up decluttering them. This one I've had a while, the Jelly Dough Blusher from Holika Holika in Grapefruit Jelly. I really like this. It's kind of a, a putty formula, it dries down to a powder finish. It's kind of in a peachy shade. I don't know how well this performs anymore. It looks really airbrushing on the skin. It looks really pretty, but I haven't reached for this in so long, so I need to see if it really performs. Again, do I love this shade on me also? The Fluffy Blush from Pacifica in Sunset. I really like this. I don't think there's anything wrong with the formula. It's a nice putty blush. I thought the NARS Air Matte blushes were going to be similar, but I actually ended up preferring this formula more. It's more emollient, it has decent pigmentation, but again, will I reach for this over some of my other ones? I just don't want to hold on to it if it's going to honestly get ignored. And then I have one from Doll Beauty. It's the Pretty Fly Free Melt in Doll A Day. I think what I like best about this, almost dropped it, is the shade in here. It's got like gold infused in the pigment, but it's kind of on the lighter side, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's like almost that it's so shimmery, it can turn kind of gray. I feel like I like this one. Just again, like, do I like it over <laughs> a lot of my other ones? Cause it, it just will get ignored. And I would rather honestly just pass it along if I'm not gonna fall in love. And then I've had this one for a while. It is the Primrose and Cream Lip and Cheek Cream Palette from Seraphine Botanicals. 
this was such a beautiful formula it's honestly really intensely pigmented high quality high performing but i haven't reached for it in so long and honestly i don't know if i love these shades am i grabbing for this formula will i reach for this little palette over all my freaking other ones i don't know i don't know i need to test it again is it too intense or is it perfect because that is not sticky it's like creamy but not sticky so yeah i need to test it again I feel like I was in love with this when I first tried it and like for the first year that I had it, but I just, I haven't reached for it. So we're going to give it another go. And then I have two from Kiko Milano. These are the Velvet Touch Sticks. I had such trouble applying these. They don't lay on top of powder well. And that was the problem is that I like to powder before I put my blush down. So I need to see whether or not these look good and blend out well and then i apply powder on top of them because they're such a dry formula yeah i was just finding that they were like pilling up on top of powder even though i was like taking a brush and like bouncing it into the cheeks but none of my other ones do that i feel like these just do that because they're so darn dry but anyway i need to find out whether or not um I'm willing to compromise or if I just need to find the, the sweet spot and applying these. And then finally, oh no, not finally, there's two more. The next one I have is from Simi Haze. This one is a duo. So it's the Tropic Solar Tint Blush Duo in the shade Tropic, sorry. So one shimmery side, one matte side. I think it looks beautiful. Again, it just comes down to, am I going to reach for this over some of my other formulas? So there's the matte and there's the dewy one. They're pretty. I, again, I just, is this like a preferred formula of mine? Cause I have so many blushes that I need to isolate the ones that are not my favorite and then pass them along. Now, finally, and I'm surprised that I put this in here, but this is a shade thing for me. This is the Pillow Talk Matte Beauty Blush Wand in Pink Gasm, Pink Pop, sorry. And the reason that I put this in here is because this shade might be a little bit too pink light pink like i'm going for more pinks these days but i'm not necessarily doing it in this light of a pink and i got three shades so that i could test this on my channel and i really love the formula so i kept the other two but i don't know if i'm going to reach for this pinky of a shade it translates really really bright pink on the cheeks more so than a lot of the other ones, even the ones that I've shown you so far. It's just really, really light pink. Okay, guys, I know this is on the longer side. There's a lot of stuff here. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the video so far. I have some highlighters here, mascaras, and then I have a few eyeshadow palettes. First highlighter is the Star Surfer one from Kaleidos. The reason that I put this in here is because this is a bit of a grittier formula. It's pink and it's pretty, but it's not the smoothest one that I have in my collection. Plus it's kind of on the sparkly side. It's one of the less shifty ones and I've decluttered most of the shifty ones that I've had, but I don't know if I'm reaching for ones that are this sparkly right now. And I held onto some other ones that are kind of sparkly like this that I prefer a little bit more. So I wanna see what that looks like on the cheeks. This one from ColourPop is the Lunch Money highlighter. And I held onto Flexitarian, but I feel like Lunch Money is on the lighter side. So yeah, I wanna put this back on the cheeks. I can't remember if this is something that I absolutely love. It still feels very, very creamy. Then I have one from Melt. This is the highlighter in Stargazer. I don't know if this is a shade that I love. Like I feel like the formula is fine and nice and smooth, but I feel like it might be a bit of a deep shade. So need to test that out again. I'm leaning on keeping this one. The one from Nabla, the skin glazing highlighter in Ozone. I love this formula. It's this beautiful baked soft formula and it's like old school but I bet you I'll hold on to this one. This one's so pretty. So I'll probably keep that one now that I'm looking at it, but I haven't put it on in so long. Then I have one final one from Ofra. This is the one in Glazed Donut. I need to love this one too. Otherwise, I just, I have others in my collection. Look how icy this is. It might be too icy. Yeah, I need to test it again. And then MAC Extra Dimension Skin Finish in Double Gleam. Another one I haven't worn in a while. Again, it's just about kind of like dialing down the collection. Does this one stand out? I like the way that one and the Nabla one look. 
All right, let's get into mascaras. I actually have quite a few <laughs> mascaras here as well. I have the Can't Stop Staring Mascara from Give Beauty. I really liked this one when I first tested it. It has like a unique wand to it, kind of an interesting tip to it. I just don't know if it ranks where it initially did now that I have other mascaras that I've been testing that I like more than this one. Can't even really remember. I feel like it was decent and like pigmented, but not necessarily like the kind of intensity that I'm looking for. And then the one from Gucci. I think this is a lighter mascara. I think that it's, again, just not as intense as I'm looking for. And it's buildable though. That's the one thing about this mascara is that it's the most buildable that I have in my collection. It builds on itself better than any other mascara. I just, again, I, I'm reaching for super volumizing mascaras and I, I don't know if this one really needs to stay. And then the CoverGirl Lash Blast Volume Mascara in Waterproof. I think CoverGirl does a good job. Again, I just don't know if this is intense as I like. So I have my favorites now and I'm really trying to dial it down. And then I have the CoverGirl Lash Blast Clean. Very similar wand, very similar like formula to the other one. This one is a little bit tackier, not as creamy as this one. This one doesn't have as much like tack to it. It's a little bit of a wetter formula. So I need to test both of these out. Again, it's nice to have a drugstore option. It's just that mascara right now, like I don't wanna reach for it unless it's my absolute favorite. Then I have the full sleeve from KVD. I like this one, but again, I think it's just a little bit light doesn't have enough tack to it. It's, it's maybe too wet of a formula for me. Pretty, but it's more separating and lengthening than it is volumizing. And then this little unmarked beauty is from Simi Haze. I really loved this mascara when I first tried it. It has one of those like Maybelline Sky High mascara wands kind of. Uh, this is a little bit older, so I don't know if I wanna repurchase it. I used to love it. Yeah, I don't know if it's as intense as I'm liking right now, so. That's that on the mascaras. Let's go through these couple of eyeshadow palettes that I have. I actually really tried to narrow down the eyeshadow palettes. I did not pull out a ton, but the first one that I have is the Alva 2 from Odin's Eye. You know, some of my shimmers when I was swatching them during the declutter were kind of on the drier side, so want to give the formula a chance here to see if these still creamy and still perform. And same thing for the Saga of Freya palette. Again, just want to see if some of these shimmers are still creamy and nice. And do I love the color story? The thing is like some of these oils have leaked out into the pan. I'd love to play with this side a little bit more. Don't know if I want to hold on to this one as there are other Odin's Eye palettes that I'm just enjoying. So we'll test this out. Two from Lethal Cosmetics. I did not love the formula on these. It's Memento and I think Destiny is the other one. I wanted to try Lethal. This is my first attempt trying Lethal, but these shimmers are on the drier side. I don't think the mattes were as blendable as I would have liked. So I was a little disappointed in the formula. Having heard that Lethal's pretty good. This one is the Destiny one because these are just on the drier side. I think I prefer a creamier shimmer is what it kind of comes down to. So I would keep these for comparison if I tried a different Lethal Cosmetics palette and maybe this is just a drier kind of palette duo here. And then I have three from Viseart. These all have the same issues. This was from the Lotus Collection, the Sakura Lotus, the Rosea Lotus, and then the Water Lotus. These were just really different from all the other Viseart palettes that I have in my collection. They were powdery, they didn't last very long, they were barely pigmented, uh, the shimmers were very, very light, and they faded off of my eyes very quickly. I don't wanna hold on to this collection, honestly, just for the sake of holding on to them, if they end up not performing at all, because they just don't, they don't seem to, perform like my other fizzy art palettes. I feel like this collection was honestly manufactured at a different place. That's how I feel about this. So I, I need to retest these. I just wasn't impressed. And then these two from Huda, the chocolate brown and then the caramel brown, I can't even remember how these perform at all. I don't even know if I love the color stories on these. It's been, it's been a while since I've grabbed for these. So I need to test these out again, see how these shimmers perform. I feel like these shimmers are on the dry side compared to her larger palettes. So we'll see. 
and that is it that is everything on the chopping block you guys i'm sure this is on the longer side please let me know in the comments like if you'd like to see like dedicated videos trying these on otherwise you know what i'll probably end up doing is just do like dedicated videos like chopping block bronzers chopping block blushes after i'm done testing like a particular category and then kind of go from there so i hope you guys enjoyed if you guys are not currently subscribed i would love to see you subscribe i'm out of here and i hope to catch you all in my next video bye guys